In this tutorial, we will learn the basics of Adobe Flash CS6, uh, including layout of the program and some of the uh, main tools that can be used. So I've already started up Adobe Flash CS6, and it will come up with this screen usually by default. The first thing that we'll do is we'll start a new file, and the type of file that we use for a regular animation is an action script. 3.0 file. So we click on create new action script 3.0. And then we'll come up with this screen. So there's a few different sections of the screen that we need to be aware of in Adobe Flash. The first part of the screen, which my mouse cursor is on now, is called the stage. And this white section of the stage is everything that is visible, everything that can be seen in your animation and you can change that to you can zoom in you can zoom out or you can have it fitting in the window so that you can see everything there so that's the stage and that's that's everything that you'll see in your animation the next thing is the timeline down here <clears throat> and the timeline shows all the individual frames in your animation with a number above each frame so each little block here is an individual frame and you can move along the timeline backwards and forwards and see everything that's happening in your animation so that's the timeline next to the timeline on the left are your layers now layers can be used um, to stack different objects in your animation they can be used for a background so you might have one layer for a background which could be sky you could have another layer for uh, a background which could be hills um, or grass and then you could have another layer for a character moving um, or walking across the screen and you might have another layer for maybe a bird flying across the screen so you can have different layers with different objects and different animations happening on each individual layer and to add new layers you can either right click on an existing la layer and click insert layer you can also delete layers by right clicking as well or you can just click the button in the bottom left hand corner new layer and that will create a new layer so i've got layer one and layer two it's important though that you give your layers a name uh, that explains what is actually happening on that layer so if you have a layer for the background say it's layer one you can double click on layer one and rename it to background if you have a character on layer 2 then you can rename that to character so that it's a little bit easier to see what's going on in your animation if you build up a big animation you have several layers you could have 20 different layers in your animation it gets very confusing if they're all just named layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 etc it's much better to give them a proper name so that's the uh, layer section next to the timeline you can also make um, layers visible or hide them underneath this little eye icon here you can show or hide layers so if you click that and you have a character on that layer, layer it will now be hidden or the background you can hide that as well you can also lock a layer so that it can't be edited and that's the little padlock icon if you click on that layer with the padlock icon then that layer will be um, locked for editing. You won't be able to modify anything on that layer while it's locked. Okay, so we've got the stage, we've got the timeline, and we've got our layer section. On the right here, there's the properties tab. And the properties tab basically shows the properties of what are the, whatever object we've got selected. So at the moment, we haven't got any objects selected, so it's just showing the properties of the whole document or the whole file so the frames per second it's, it's it'll play at 24 frames per second it's showing the size of the document it's 550 by 400 pixels it's uh, showing the background color of the stage which is currently white but for example if we created a shape using one of these tools here then we could change the properties of that shape such as the shapes uh, border or outside color the uh, fill color that kind of thing on the library tab that's where um, 
different effects and different objects can be stored, which we'll have a look at in a minute. One of the most important things to do first when you set up a new file in Adobe Flash is to um, set up the size and the frames per second. So if you click on Modify and Document, um, this was also what's in the Properties tab, but you can click on Modify and Document and see these settings here. So we can change the dimensions. So currently the width of the um, animation is set to 550 pixels and the height is set to 400. You could change that to 1280 by 720, which is the standard resolution for um, 720p um, HD. Okay, you can change the units as well, pixels, centimeters, points, inches. You can change the background color of the animation and you can change the frame rate which is by default set at 24 so we'll leave that alone because that, that frame rate's fine. If you change the background color here it applies it for the entire animation so if you change the background to blue then the entire animation from start to finish is going to have a blue background so you might want to leave that as is and if you want to have different backgrounds in your animation throughout then you can create those on different layers. So click OK and now that change that's changed the size of our animation. Okay, on the right hand side you've got different tools. If you've used Photoshop or Illustrator, some of these will be very familiar. Selection tools, uh, free transform tools. So free transform tool can be used to modify a shape, like the size of a shape. Different selection tools, we've got the text tool to create text, line tool. And then there's a the shape tools here. The first one that we have is a rectangle tool. If we click on that arrow, just beneath, just beneath the rectangle, we get other options as well, like the oval tool um, and a few other different options. When we click a tool, like the rectangle tool, we can change the color of that tool. The first color that we can change here, if you have a look in the properties tab, is the stroke color. If we change the stroke color, that will be changing the outside line or the border of this shape. So if we make it uh, maybe make it blue, and then we change the fill color, which is the inside color of the shape, to line, and we draw that rectangle, you'll see that it has a blue border on the outside and it's filled with green. So Blue is the stroke color and green is the fill color. And you can change the uh, thickness of the stroke there as well. If you like, just need to select it first using the selection tool. So if we use the selection tool there, we highlight our object that we've drawn, we can change the properties for that object. And there's a few other properties there that you, um, you can look at if you like. There's also a pencil tool for drawing and a, a paintbrush tool. There's a deco tool which we'll look at in another tutorial, but that's basically used for a number of different effects like flames, um, sort of tree branches, putting buildings in. Um, so there's a number of different uh, things that you can use there. So that's the basic layout of Adobe Flash CS6. One more important thing to note is that sometimes you might accidentally move your toolbars around and you, you might not be able to find a, a specific tool that you're looking for. It might disappear. So to get everything back to what it looked like originally, you can click on Window and go down to Workspace. And if you're using the Essentials Workspace, you can click on Reset Essentials. And that basically resets all of the toolbars back to the original position. Um, and any toolbars that disappeared, it brings them back as well. So that's a basic, basic layout of Adobe Flash CS6. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at animating a shape. Thanks for watching.